This is it. The putt to win the tournament. If you sink it, the championship is yours. But on your backswing, your hat falls over your eyes. Is this how you're running your business? Poor visibility because you're still relying on spreadsheets and outdated finance software? To see the full picture, you need to upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system to power your growth. With visibility and control of your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budget, and more, NetSuite is everything you need to grow, all in one place. With NetSuite, you can automate your processes and close your books in no time while staying well ahead of your competition. 93% of surveyed businesses increased their visibility and control after upgrading to NetSuite. Over 27,000 businesses already use NetSuite. And right now, through the end of the year, NetSuite is offering a one-of-a-kind financing program to those ready to upgrade at NetSuite.com slash C-Suite. Head to NetSuite.com slash C-Suite for special end-of-year financing on the number one financial system for growing businesses. NetSuite.com slash C-Suite. Hello and welcome to Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. I'm Becky Parker Geist and I'm your host. Audiobook Connection is your place to learn about the audiobook creative process in discussions between the authors, narrators, producers, and post production teams that bring them all together, as well as guests who have listened to the audiobooks and have questions for the creative teams. This podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Today, we bring you an interview with author, songwriter, singer, and creative spirit, Margot Elaine Jones, creator of Beneath the Dragonwood Trees. This is an audiobook for the whole family, a magical creation of music, sound, and story, with a full cast of 10, including Margot Elaine Jones, Charles Moselle, Buffy Ford Stewart, Rebecca J. Nile, Esther Kleiman, Jeannie Lauren, Corinne Kaysen, Oscar Salabert, Benjamin Bossy, and Ken Kramers. We met at Margot's studio in San Rafael, California, and with her were the ensemble of Beneath the Dragonwood Trees. You may hear them in the background. Margot, give us a hint about some of the characters you play in Beneath the Dragonwood Trees. I play a number of characters. Uh, well, one of them is Little Bell. <laughs> now, don't you, darling? Don't you do that now? <laughs> oh, my heaven's sake. <laughs> and, and then I play um, Poncho. Oh, my little chiquita, chicken bomba. I'm just living my second childhood right now doing this. I, I fantasized doing characters all my life and um, never really got the opportunity to do it until I wrote my own thing, which that was the only way I got to do it, was to write my own thing. So... As the creator of this project, you've really created an opportunity for some real talented folks to shine. And I would love for you to tell us a little bit more about the creation of that opportunity. Creating the opportunity. Well, I have this strange belief that I didn't really create it because I would go to sleep and have a dream and I'd see the whole thing. I would hear the music. I would see pictures. I would see the dance. I I just saw the whole thing. And I had to wake up and say, oh, my God, I got to look. So I run to my desk and try to write everything down as fast as I could before I forget it. And and it's kind of the same thing with the drawings. I actually could see the drawings. I close my eyes. I see the drawings already drawn. They're already there. I just pick up my pen and just try to trace it all out. So it's just a process of I just was a collector. I just collected the information. It's out there. And I got lucky. I got to get it before somebody else. Um, I really believe that. Creativity is a process that you, you tune into it. And in tuning into it, you discover that, oh, my God, there's a project out there. I hear a song, and you create that. If you're really tuned in, you can do it. Anybody can do that. And how did you pull together this amazing ensemble? Well, that was just all serendipitous in a way because I knew Jeannie. I've been friends with her forever, long, long, long time. We, we've done theater in the back in the 70s. And she used to do costuming and all that sort of stuff. And she's kind of eclectic. She's a dancer, you know, this and that and the other. And I thought, well, she's got this new business, Skyanna. She's got all these actors. I'll just call her up and say to her, have you got anybody that would like to read for a a part that I have here, some parts? Uh, Yeah. So she called up a few people. She ran into Kenny in the streets and this one over there and that one over here. And they just, all at once, they were just there. And like I say, that is another serendipitous moment. I think 
it was meant to be that I got to be with all these really great people who understood what I was trying to do. Because a lot of actors might not have picked it up the same way that all of these people have, and I think I was just meant to be with them. And I know Charles Moselle has been a big part of the creative force with you. What has it been like working with him? Oh, well, it's hysterical. We laugh our heads off at everything. I mean, he'll do a voice like when he was coming up with the idea of how he wanted to sound as a compass, and he's doing his thing, and I'm just howling with laughter because I'm thinking, damn, I wrote these things, and, and then they get in there and they do these voices on it, and it just makes it all come to life in a way that I didn't quite envision, you know. But he is Mel Blanc, the younger, new Mel Blanc. He can, he can does everything. I mean, he plays any instrument. Now, Charles, I want a violin here, and I want it to kind of sound like this, you know, and I'll do a melody, and he goes, oh, you mean this. And he does it. And I go, that's exactly what I'm hearing. And then I'll say, uh, well, Charles, you know, um, I'm not so sure this character should be sounding like that. Can you EQ that a little bit so that it sounds more, can you lower that voice a little? Oh, yeah, it, you know, he does it all. And then, and then he'll turn around and sing a song and uh, play the wolf. And scatting, oh my gosh. And beatboxing, oh my gosh. And then he's got this whole movement for the wolf where he's dancing, you know, and I'm thinking, yeah, that stuff is really, that's exactly what's in my head. Exactly what you just did, I saw that. So he just produced everything that was inside of me and vice versa. You know, it just works like that with us. It's a really amazing, I met Charles many, many, many years ago when we were in LA and I always thought, he's kind of doofusy. I mean, he's out there. He's really, oh, he's too way out there. Oh, no, 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 he's too way out. And then 20 years later down the road, I'm thinking, gosh, this guy's really interesting. He's, wow, he's really, he's crazy. He's crazy good. So that's how it all came together. I mean, I, I would not have this production the way it is right now were it not for Charles. And then, of course, there's Jeannie, who's made some miracles with the dollars. She is a very successful artist herself and has been able to make money where some of us haven't. We don't make the money that she's able to make. And we've tapped her to death. And thank God she's been very, very amenable to giving us help that way. And the marvelous creativity with her puppets, to create those puppets, to build those puppets. And everybody, my friend Buffy, who is, has been spectacular in helping us out here and there, and, and Rebecca, who plays a million characters, and... I mean, I can go on and on. There's not one person in this room that isn't brilliant. I just got lucky. I got brilliant people. So yeah, I could have had schmucky energy that sort of good, and you got to go with them because you don't have anybody else. The Lord, just one, two, three, four, five, I got them all. They're better than anybody I could have gotten in Hollywood. And I did my dues in Hollywood. I worked in Hollywood for many years on other people's projects that I and, but I learned a lot, you know, I did learn a lot in Hollywood. I dined with the best in Hollywood. I met everybody who was somebody in Hollywood because I knew this person and that person who was an artist, they would drag me along. And I would get these projects that I thought were just not what I wanted. So I moved out of Hollywood and said to myself, get a studio, write your own stuff and get it together as fast as you can because you're not young. So I said, okay, that's what I'm going to do. And, and that's how I got to this space right here. And what would you say is your biggest challenge? My biggest challenge is money. Because it takes money to do things like this, even though you scratch and scrape, which we've all done that. All the actors here have donated their time and their energy to doing this for free. So it has been a labor of love be wonderful if we could get some donations coming in to finish off the way we really want to do it. We have ideas for doing the animation. Now that we have all of this soundtrack together, we probably could very easily do an animated project with it. We have a wonderful publisher in Becky Parker Geist who has really encouraged me as an artist and um, has ideas about doing off-Broadway, which would be wonderful fun. And so... Those are challenges, but they're opportunities that I hope are going to walk in the door. And I'd love to hear you tell us more about your big vision for this project. So it would be wonderful to, to have a successful book, hard copy and audio, and then progress from there to doing a really fabulous animated project and maybe perhaps do something in an off-Broadway production development 
that would lead us to an even bigger project. I tried to create a way with this project that nobody could say no, because, oh, you can't do the animated project yet. Oh, well, but I have the book. Oh, well, then if you have the book, maybe you'd better do the stage play. Oh, but oh, I wrote the stage play. Oh, well, then, uh, you know, so I did as many versions of this that I could do so nobody could say no. Well, you clearly have a lot of determination and the energy to go with it. What is it about this story that is really important to you and what it's bringing to the world? Well, I really believe in family entertainment. Family entertainment is extremely important right now because we have a lot of sad, negative things that are happening. And I really want to bring joy. I want to bring some kind of spiritual messages without being preachy. We need to go back to giving out messages to kids that are uplifting and hopefully enjoyable at the same time. So that's my main emphasis is family entertainment. I noticed that you say family and not just children. I hope that parents will enjoy this story as much as the kids do because I did write it in the hopes that they would. I tried to make it so family entertainment that no matter how old you are, whether it's 7 or 80, that you would get a, a really good enjoyment out of listening to the story. So I hope that that happens. I hope that it crosses over through all ages. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time to speak with me today, and I would like to encourage our listeners to visit margoelainejones.com to learn more about what's happening with this project and also to share a review of the audiobook wherever you purchased it online. Thanks so much for joining us. Let's listen to a bit of Beneath the Dragonwood Trees by Margot Elaine Jones. She yanked a small bottle from her skirt and gulped it down. <gasps> well, Sire Bumbles is the one to help you. But there's a storm coming, not to mention the wolf. Good luck. You'll need it. She pulled open the door to the hut and disappeared inside. Quack! Ay, caruba! That wickedy, the dispositions is very bad. Quack! And I don't gonna like this. Well, she is a good witch, even if she doesn't act like one. Papacita was right. Vovolenda loco, vovolenda loco. I feel it in my bonesies, and the bonesies, quack, is never wrong. Don't worry, Pancho. I got my compass. Reaching into his pocket, he pulled out a silver instrument the size of a pocket watch. It had two eyes and a mouth, and its hand was gold and spun around. <laughs> then it giggled and blinked its eye at Peter. North, south, east, west, bleached, blessed, with Liverpool, Bratwurst, or Liverwurst, wherever you wish to go, my man. Well, your hand is pointing due north, so we'll go north. That's where the wolf is, I'll bet. Okay, everybody get close and listen. If any one of us gets lost or separated, we'll give the secret signal. You know, pow-wow, uga-waga, um, pow-wow. Got it? We got it. Quack. This is no going to be easy. I got deep feelings, and deep feelings is never... Is never wrong. wrong. See, amigos. Aw, come on, Poncho. I'll catch that wolf. Get my badge of honor. We'll have a good time. You'll see. Oh, now, just don't you worry, Poncho, darling. We're going to be home before the rooster crows. Well, Val, it's 2 p.m., don't you know? Oh, my silly me. He's already crowed, hasn't he? I mean, he's already crowed. <laughs> Aw, come on. Time's a wasting. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Listen. Near Shadow Creek and Millberry Brook, it's not so far away. Look at his foot and licorice sticks, there's plenty of fun for play.
into the forest. Now, I need to stop and explain a few things. Thanks for joining us for Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. Please take a moment to subscribe at audiobookconnection.com. The podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Learn more at proaudiovoices.com. Again, thanks for being with us, and please join us for our next episode of Audiobook Connection. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.